Good morning, guys. Will and Ryan here with another outdoor adventure here in South Central Idaho. And today we're doing an archery antelope hunt. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. We're here in Southern Idaho on the first day of our archery pronghorn hunt. We're holed up here in a spot that we're hoping that the antelope are going to come into and just kind of tuckered in. Who knows how many hours we're going to be here, but this is what it takes. Uh, it's either setting up on a spot that the antelope are going to come into or uh, walking around until we see him and try to put the stock on. So we'll see what the this day looks like, how many hours we're gonna set up here, and when our butts get so sore or numb that we can't sit any longer, then we'll probably get up and go see if we can find them. So thanks for joining me this morning. We'll see what happens. You know, unfortunately, with the sun on our face, our faces are lit up like deer butts. So we'll hope if they come in, they'll come in a little later. After the sun is a little higher and they can't see our faces as much, we didn't bring our face masks. Bad call. absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> I think it's because my heart was beating too fast. I don't know. Well, we'll see if uh, we'll see if the Lord decides that he's going to give me another shot. Or Ryan a shot. sitting here in pain and mental anguish thinking about the worst shot on a pronghorn that's ever been made. I was analyzing and replaying what happened, what went wrong. I mean, that's embarrassing. I'm still going to show it on video, but that's embarrassing me uh, missing by that large of a margin. And so after analyzing this over and over again, I finally figured out what the real problem was. And so I have a tip for you all that, that I learned here today. And then hopefully me passing this along to you, you can avoid the same mistake. So to start off with, when I saw those three pronghorn skylight themselves on the hill adjacent to me, immediately my heart started to pound like I was a 12 year old kid seeing my first buck. It was ridiculous the amount of buck fever that had, that I had with that. So they're walking down the slope over to this water hole that we're set up on. And my heart is still boom, 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 still pounding really bad. And as they disappeared out of sight, just on the other side of this berm, I went and took my bow and I propped it up on my knee, just like that, to steady myself. And obviously that helped a lot steady myself. And after they went behind the berm, I went ahead and pulled back. But I kept the bow on my knee. And 
as they came around into sight. I'm going back and I'm looking down my peep and I got my I got my sight zeroed in on that little buck. But I never took the bow off my knee. And I fired that shot with that bow resting on my knee just like I was shooting a flipping rifle. And obviously you see that this has a cam on it. And so it just went So that dumb mistake cost me that buck. I will never make that mistake again. And I hope that me sharing this with you, this big tip, was worth every second of you watching this hunt with me. Well, we're in between, hopefully in between pronghorn right now. And so we'll go ahead and sit up and I'll shut up and we'll see if we can't have any more animals come in on. Well, that was a big buck. That uh, buck and a doe came in. And it's like they always send the does first. I think that's some sort of, I think there's like an Adam and Eve connection there where the, where the, the woman is the first into temptation. <laughs> so that big buck held back and uh, unfortunately saw Ryan draw spooked out of here. The buck didn't see it, but the doe did. I ran. I ran over there hoping that I could get behind some brush and maybe he'd stop and give me a, a longer shot. But too far. Well, let's hopefully get, hopefully we're between antelope again. So we got our blinds a little built up a little bit more. So hopefully we're not seen as easily. We're really exposed up here on the bank, but it hasn't kept us from getting close to the antelope. So we just built our blinds up just a little bit more, found some dead sagebrush, and put them up there. So we'll see. As soon as we construct our, get our blinds a little bit more dialed in, in the front, a group of seven came up right behind us. And we could, all of a sudden we heard hoof, you know, we heard steps. And then within, I don't know, 20 seconds after that, they started snorting or alarming, buzzing, I don't know. If you know what that word is, I'm not even going to look it up. I'm going to depend on you to look it up and put it in the comments section. When we're hunting whitetail, we call it blowing. Anyway, uh, Ryan got up and got a standing shot at the buck. It was uh, six does and a, and a little, I don't know, a little 12, 13 inch buck. And, uh, this is Ryan's first archery hunt, and so he learned firsthand how difficult it is to judge distance, especially for animals that appear a lot bigger than they really are. And so he ended up shooting under him, but I was pumped he got to take a shot at, a, at an antelope on, on his first day antelope hunting. So that was pretty sweet. So the wind's blowing right in our face, which is why they winded us, but that means that uh, for the ones that are like coming in from the east, like the uh, the first six have, and the wind is uh, is still working in our favor. So let's get back at it. I, I see. 
I see you're packing a knife. That's very optimistic. <laughs> Why'd you curse us? I told you if we have the knife, we won't get an animal. <laughs> oh. Well, for those of you who haven't had the privilege of being able to sit in the desert all the way through the heat of the day in the shade of a bush, sagebrush, boy, are you missing out feeling of sweat dripping down your body, insane boredom, one cheek falling asleep, and then the next cheek falling asleep, and then the minute you relieve pressure, pain. So it looks like we're going to change strategy a little bit for the rest of the day and go and try to find something to put a stock on. It's always easier for them to come to you, but, uh, but yeah, you can only sit for so long. For uh, Some folks can sit a thousand years, other guys can sit five seconds, so I think we put in our time here, so we'll see if we get, uh, if we get any action, but uh, either way, we had a great day. <laughs> hey guys, well, thanks for joining us on our hunt. We are, uh, you know, we came, we saw, and we got our butts handed to us. We missed a couple antelope, but we saw a few. And uh, since one o'clock, it's been nada. The smoke rolled in and no luck. But I tell you what, it was good getting out with this guy and we still had a lot of fun. Our butts are sore, but we had a, but we did have a good time. So I'm gonna ask Ryan though, what was your, your best, worst, weirdest? Best would be getting the shot at that one, even though I yeah, missed. Even though you missed, yeah. Worst was when I should have taken the shot at that buck. I could have hit it in the neck. It was close enough. You mean the big one? The big one, yeah. The big the huge one. Big one. Okay. I don't know about weirdest. Oh, I know what the weirdest was. Huh. He brought a knife to a blind. <laughs> Folks, I already gave you one tip on how not to shoot a bow from the standing from the sitting position. Here's the other tip. Never bring your gutting knife to your blind. You will curse yourself. You will never shoot an animal with a knife on you. Well, folks, I just uh, thank you so much for joining us on our adventure today. Love to remind you to be sure to subscribe to this channel, to give us a thumbs up, and to continue to check back with us as we continue to film our daily adventures. So this was our adventure today. What will your adventure be tomorrow? Take care, you guys.